This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at the transition elements. So let's start with the definition of a transition element. A transition element is an element whose atom has an incomplete D sublevel or can form positive ions with an incomplete D sublevel. Here we can see the first row D block elements. Those are the elements from scandium to zinc. Of these first row D block elements, one of them is not classified as a transition element. And that element is zinc. So zinc is not considered to be a transition element as it does not have an incomplete D sublevel as an atom or an ion. So next we look at this in more detail. In this table we have the first row D block element, the electron configuration of the atom, the ion formed and the electron configuration of the ion. So we'll start by looking at the electron configuration of the atoms. So if we start with scandium, we can see that as we go down the table, each element has an incomplete D sublevel. Until that is, we get to copper and zinc. As mentioned in the previous slide, zinc is not considered to be a transition element. However, copper is a transition element. If we look at the electron configuration of the copper 2 plus ion, we can see that it does have an incomplete D sublevel. However, if we look at the electron configuration of the zinc 2 plus ion, we can see that it has a full D sublevel. So copper is considered to be a transition element because its 2 plus ion has an incomplete D sublevel. However, zinc is not considered to be a transition element because as an atom or ion, it does not have an incomplete D sublevel. Another point to note is that the scandium 3 plus ion does not have an incomplete D sublevel. However, the scandium atom does have an incomplete D sublevel, therefore it's considered to be a transition element. So next we look at the physical and chemical properties of the transition elements. So starting with the physical properties, they have high electrical and thermal conductivity, they have high melting points, they are malleable and ductile, they have high tensile strength and they show magnetic properties. Now on to the chemical properties. They have more than one oxidation state in compounds, they form complex ions, they also form colored compounds in solution and they can act as catalysts. There are four properties which will be covered in more detail in later videos. They are the magnetic properties, the variable oxidation states, the formation of complex ions, and the formation of colored compounds in solution. So that's all from this video. In the next video, we'll look at the formation of complex ions.